Hi, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be doing the long-awaited review of Paula's Choice Skincare. If that sounds like a good time to you, go ahead and settle in. This is going to be a long one. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Holly, and I create beauty, fashion, and self-care videos right here on YouTube. If that's your jam, consider subscribing. I'd love to have you in the family. But right now, we're just going to jump right into the video. So for this review, what I did is I went to the Paula's Choice website, and I perused quite a bit and I picked a handful of products that just looked interesting to me. Then I tested them, I took copious notes and I'm bringing my insights back to you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about the products that I used and then we're gonna wrap this up with some final thoughts about the brand. So we're gonna start with cleansers. This is the first cleanser that we're gonna talk about. It is the perfectly balanced foaming cleanser. And um, this is a mini size. The full size retails for $20. Now I know a lot of people say not to use foaming cleansers because they're not good for your skin. However, I think if you know your skin and you're making sure you're not using a cleanser that is too harsh and it's not going to strip, then you can use a foaming cleanser. That's perfectly fine. Um, so on the website, it says that this removes makeup, but I would have to disagree. Um, this is a very gentle cleanser. If you're trying to remove makeup, it's not gonna work. You would need to use like a cleansing balm or cleansing oil and then use this as your second wash. The other cleanser that I tried is this Unscrub. It retails for $29. Uh, the website calls this a gentle scrub that removes makeup, sunscreen, and impurities. And again, I would have to disagree with that. Um, this isn't even remotely like a scrub. Um, it does have a little bit of beads in it, but it's not going to be doing any kind of scrubbing. Um, but second, you don't need to be using any kind of scrub to remove makeup. And this is also not going to remove makeup. The only time that I would suggest using this product, if you're wanting to try it, is in the morning. Um, it, it's a very gentle cleanser. There's no scrubbing properties and it's definitely not going to remove makeup. Um, honestly, I would just skip this altogether. Of course, I can't do a Paula's Choice review without mentioning the 2% BHA liquid exfoliant. Um, this is a viral product. People talked about it on TikTok and they went crazy for it. Um, so BHA, if you don't know, is beta hydroxy acid. Um, BHAs are typically salicylic acid and they are oil soluble, which means this kind of product is really great for someone with oily skin. It's going to do good things to unclog your pores and it's also going to help like get rid of like the oil, the excess oil. So if you're someone who is combination oily, acne prone, clogged skin, then this type of product is going to be really nice. Now, if your skin tends to be a little bit on the dry side, um, you probably want to skip this product. When I went to the Paula's Choice website to look for serums, I was surprised that there weren't very many serums to choose from. A lot of times, like, you go to, like, Sephora or you go to any other beauty website and there's tons of serums, like, more than you could ever need. Anyway, that being said, I decided to try the Ultralight Super Antioxidant Concentrate Serum. This is like a little size of it. Let me pull up my notes about this. So this is a lightweight serum. It's formulated with hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, vitamin C, vitamin E, and like a handful of antioxidants. I'm going to squeeze some out so you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, this product tries to do a little bit of everything with that list of ingredients. Um, if you have a hard time using vitamin C products because maybe you have a reaction to them, I would suggest trying this product just because it uses um, a different version of vitamin C that's a little bit more stable and a little bit less harsh on the skin. Now we're going to move on to eye creams. And this is a tricky subject because a lot of people are like, you don't need eye creams. Eye creams are a waste of money, blah, 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 blah. Well, if you know me, you know I am team eye cream. And that is because the skin under your eyes is often different and has different needs than the skin on the rest of your face. Now, if you have 
beautiful skin all over your face. Maybe you don't need an eye cream, but the vast majority of us, especially those of us getting older, definitely need an eye cream. So all of that is to say, I tried the Resist Anti-Aging Eye Gel. This is again, the mini size, the full size retails for $35. Now this is formulated with glycerin, hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, panthenol, and a bunch of other um, different antioxidants. Now going into this, a lot of the reviews are like, oh, this burns my eyes, it stings. And so I was a little bit nervous, but I went ahead and I ordered it anyway. And just, I didn't have that experience with burning or anything at all. Um, I'm gonna try to show you a little bit of the formula again, just so you can kind of see what that looks like. It's pretty thin. Um, and with that, I have to say it's not very hydrating. So if you have like oily your skin or you maybe have like oily eyes, um, I guess that might be a thing. Um, then you might want something lightweight like this. However, if you're looking for something that is a little bit more hydrating, something that's going to help your wrinkles, um, you're not going to like that. It's just not rich enough. Now we're going to talk about moisturizers slash SPF. And now if you're familiar at all with Paula's Choice, the slash SPF will make a little bit more sense to you. Now I tried three of these products. The first one that I tried, which is a moisturizer only, is the Omega Complex Moisturizer. It retails for $36 for the full size. Now this moisturizer has a really nice like whipped texture, if you can kind of see that. It's formulated with shea butter, ceramides, and squalane. Now that combination of ingredients might sound like it's really rich and heavy or maybe greasy, but the whipped like airy texture um, keeps it from being too much. I would say this is a great moisturizer from anyone with like combination skin, particularly in like the winter time to someone with like slightly dry skin. Now if your skin is extremely dry, you might not find it um, rich enough and if your skin is oily it's probably going to be a little bit too much but i would say um for most people it's a really great option the other two moisturizers that i have are moisturizers with spf in them and when you go to the polish choice website it lists them under moisturizers so that's why i'm categorizing them as a moisturizer now the first one i want to talk about is the essential glow moisturizer broad spectrum spf 30 yes <laughs> spf 30 now i saw this and i noticed that it is a completely mineral sunscreen and i thought oh it would be interesting to kind of compare this to the super goop glow screen which is a completely chemical sunscreen to kind of see um how these two differed from each other now if you've ever used the super goop glow screen you know it is super super glowy in fact like i don't use this by the itself like if I'm going to use this, I'm definitely putting makeup on top of it or I'm mixing it with another sunscreen to kind of take down the glow factor. Um, I definitely just wouldn't wear this alone. Now on the other spectrum is this, which isn't very glowy at all. Um, it is got a slight tint to it, but it's definitely something that you can put on your face and not put any makeup on it and you're not going to look ridiculous. And I'm going to squirt out some examples just so you can see them. We're going to do the Paula's Choice first, just so that you can kind of see. And it does have a really slight tint to it. Um, so I don't know how well it would work if you have like darker skin. So this is the Paula's Choice. And then we're just going to kind of rub it in like this. And it's a little bit glowy. It's not a lot glowy. But then we're going to take the glow screen and we're going to put it on the other hand. Oh my gosh, my hands are so <laughs> slippery. So this is the glow screen. And as you can see, the color is a little bit darker initially. And it's just a little bit more reflective. So we've got the super goop on this side, and then this is the Paula's choice. Um, another thing I have to say about this is 
because it is a mineral sunscreen, it is heavier on the skin than a chemical sunscreen. That's just the nature of the beast. Um, personally, for me, um, if I put this on and then I put other things on top of it, it feels too heavy. Like I feel like my skin is being suffocated um, just because I'm really into makeup that doesn't feel like I'm wearing anything. So if I put on my skincare and then I put this on and then I put foundation on, on top of it, it's just way too much. Um, whereas with the super goop, you don't have that issue. Um, when I use the Paula's Choice alone, it definitely feels heavy ish, but it kind of, that feeling goes away. And so then you can kind of wear it throughout the day. Um, it doesn't really give you any kind of coverage though. Um, again, I don't know how this would work on people of color. If, if you know, you can leave a comment and share that with us. Okay, the other SPF that I tried is lighter. Um, it is the Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense. This is also an SPF 30. Now this is a mineral sunscreen and it is also tinted. Um, the SPF has more of a tint than the other one. Um, let's see if we can find a spot that I haven't already used. So that is the tint and you know because i'm white like that works for me um so again i don't know how well it would work on a darker skin tone though it does blend away to like you know not very much um of the two like tinted spfs that i tried um this is the one that i prefer it's also the one that has the most reviews so i think a lot of people like it now I did want to try the daily hydrating fluid, which is an SPF 50, but they were currently, they were sold out of it when I put my order. Um, I think it's back in, but I'm not going to put an order in for just one product. Um, one thing to say is that both of these products only have an SPF of 30. And I feel like this day and age, that's just not enough. Like this should be at least 40. Um, and I would feel better about that. Um, like you want your SPF number to be higher, like 45, 50, that's great. So 30 is kind of uh, low balling it. I know that like for people who aren't into sunscreen, 30 might sound great, but if you're like really into skincare, then you know you need a higher SPF. Moving on, we're gonna go on to like treatments slash masks and I have the 25% AHA, 2% BHA exfoliant peel rinse off treatment. Um, I've used this in the past and in fact, I've recommended this as an alternative to the Junk Elephant Sakari Baby Facial. Now, that being said, this isn't going to give you the same results, even though the percentages are kind of similar. Um, this is definitely much gentler. So if the drunk elephant or even the ordinary um leave your skin feeling like too raw then i would suggest trying this instead now that i have shared the products that i tested and who i think might like them i'm just gonna wrap things up with my final thoughts on the brand now paula's choice has a ton of products and i'm someone i know what my skin likes i know a little bit more about skincare than other people I know above average about ingredients and it was hard for me to decide what to put in my basket um a lot of the products had very similar names or the names didn't really explain what it was that they did so if you're someone who is new to skincare it's going to be extremely overwhelming to try and pick a skincare routine from the products um from an ingredients perspective, um, the products are made with great ingredients. Um, you can tell that they use a curated list of ingredients when they go to formulate their products. You're going to see a lot of like BHA, you're going to see a lot of niacinamide, um, hyaluronic acid too. I would say, just from what I've tried, their products kind of lean towards someone who might have like oilier skin or um, more acne prone congested skin. Um, 
that's just from what I've tried. Um, in the future, I might try some more products. And bringing up the future, I am going to be putting this review in a blog post on my blog. Once that's live, I'll link it below. And in the future, when I try new products from Paula's Choice, I will update that blog post. Whereas I probably won't update this video until I've tried every single Paula's Choice product, which could be a while. So I hope this is useful for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and until next time, bye.